Hello everyone, uh, I am back with another Kerbal Space Program video and I am launching an Atlas V replica because I'm going to recreate NASA's Lofted mission. If you don't know what Lofted is, it's uh, a mission to test an inflatable heat shield in real life by dropping it from orbit, which uh, is really cool. I can't wait for it. The mission was delayed to uh, November 9th, but hey, at least we have more than a week and uh, I won't feel as pressured to upload this video. Oh, and there go the solid rocket boosters, by the way. I know the uh, Atlas V variant that will launch the lofted spacecraft will not have uh, solid boosters, but I needed this to get into orbit. So, yeah. Oh, there goes the first stage with the famous Separatrons, and there goes the fairing. <laughs> Had a little bit of trouble with the fairing, but everything was fine in the end. You might notice that there are three Kerbals on board this mission. That is because we're going to one-up the puny agency known as NASA. We're going to launch three Kerbals in to the height of Mun orbit and drop them from there. Yes, NASA's only launching this thing to low Earth orbit, but we're launching it all the way to the Mun. We're getting some science and returning back to Kerbin. That is the main goal of this mission here. No puny, oh, we just wait 90 minutes and uh, drop it from low Earth orbit stuff. No, we are going to spend days in space to see if this thing can survive the harsh environment of space so yeah our agency is better <laughs> uh you might have noticed that uh who, who's on board this mission i think it's valentina bob and oh wait no <laughs> i was thinking of another mission i launched earlier no it's jebediah and bob Jeb is the pilot and Bob is the scientist. He's gonna collect the data from the MUN. We have a ma we have a magnetometer boom attached to the uh, heat shield to the little capsule at an angle. You really can't see it right now, but you'll see it later once we uh, get close to the MUN. And we are currently uh, performing our trans MUN injection, and we have encountered the MUN. I uh, I shouldn't have uh, corrected the course because. Uh, that lower stage, the second stage, actually has separatrons, and I kind of screwed up my um, my orbit, so I wouldn't be encountering the mud anymore. So you'll see it when it happens. And three, two, there you go. There goes the uh, second stage with some epic separatrons pulling it away from the rest of the capsule. Unfortunately, I forgot to disable the UI for the separation, but uh, you know it's fine, I guess. Uh, as you can see, it kind of screwed up my orbit, so I kind of had to like, you know, um, edit it a little bit. And then I was like, we're not going to be cowards here. We're going to try to get closer to the MUN because we probably have enough fuel to uh, deorbit and, you know, uh, come back home. And we've now time warped to the height of the MUN and let's begin science. We will first take a crew report and then we will open the magnetometer boom and take uh, a, uh, a report of the magnetic field around the MUN, if there is any, who knows, and then take an EVA report. Bob can go back into the spacecraft and retract the boom, and let's just coast until we get to Apoapsis to deorbit. So we are now setting course to our Apoapsis, time warping up, and beginning our deorbit burn to get back home. And the orbit burn will start in any minute. There we go. The thrusters have fired. And oh, wait, <laughs> there's something there. Uh, we got another MUN encounter. So hooray, I guess uh, we're going to last longer in space. Which, let's just say this was a duration test to see how long the heat shield could last in space. Uh, the mission was extended. So yeah, that's what happened right there. I couldn't find the MUN and then I uh, looked down and I was like, oh, it's right there. This is a great uh, opportunity to take a picture. I extended the boom, got rid of the UI and a beautiful sight right there. But we didn't take any science because we already took science from above the moon. Uh, oh, <laughs> did another curve in orbit there because again, this is a duration test. We want to see how long this heat shield can last in space before um you know we we want to keep this heat shield in space for as long as possible and we are now approaching Kerbin. we are uh 
pointing prograde because I reversed the controls because if you you might have noticed that during launch the capsule was upside down so that's why I reversed the controls and we are now re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere uh, getting rid of the UI again so it would look beautiful and not ugly uh, yeah our landing uh, was great uh, unfortunately we didn't land in the ocean like the real lofted mission but uh, let's just say this is an alternate variation where NASA takes uh, more risks than they usually do. You know, like in the Apollo program, they used to take um, quite a lot of risks. Like uh, after Apollo 14, they stopped using the, uh, the free return trajectory for going to the moon. So yeah, let's just say this is the NASA from the 60s. This is the NASA from For All Mankind doing this. <laughs> and you, you have seen that the, uh, the drogue chutes and the parachutes have deployed. And no, now the drogue chutes have been fully deployed and let's just wait for the mains to deploy. There we go. And now we just wait for the spacecraft to settle down on the surface of Kerbin. You can see the altitude gauge on the top of your screen. The uh, ground level is slowly coming up. Touchdown in any moment now. Getting rid of the UI and we have touched down on the surface of Kerbin and with that, the video is going to end, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, remember, all of my social media uh, platforms are in the description. Like and subscribe if you want, and goodbye. <laughs>